Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about uh, what infinite limits and limits that tend off to infinity here. And what we want to be able to do here is uh, to determine if a function increases or decrease, decreases without bound. That just means that if we evaluate the limit as x goes to some number, it tends off to positive infinity or to negative infinity. And we're going to take a look at what that means. And uh, how do we evaluate limits where x itself is tending to positive infinity or negative infinity? And in fact, you've encountered these situations before in advanced functions, but we just gave them slightly different names and we didn't talk about them in terms of limits. But you did look at things such as the end behavior of a function. And you looked at vertical asymptotes And we looked at horizontal asymptotes. So what hopefully we'll do over the course of this lesson is we will be able to connect that stuff that you already know about asymptotes to the stuff that we've been talking about with limits. So let's first of all revisit this function that we've been looking at a few times up until now, f at x equals x plus 2 over x squared minus 4. And what we're going to try to do in this example is we are going to try to find the vertical asymptotes. So how do we find the vertical asymptotes for a function? Where do they occur? What has to be true about the function in order for there to be a vertical asymptote? Well, I think in advanced functions, they told you that you they occur where the denominator is equal to 0. That's how you found them. You took your denominator, you set it equal to 0, and you solved for x. And that told you where the vertical asymptote was. Now, that is almost always true, but it's not always true. Okay. Let's take a look at this function here. Um, when we were working with this function before, we, um, we factored the denominator. We rewrote this as x plus 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. If we look at this function here and we just say, okay, where is our denominator going to be equal? That suggests that there are going to be two vertical asymptotes. One from this term, which is going to be x equals positive 2, and another one from this term, x equals negative 2. There aren't two vertical asymptotes for this function. Okay? Because we can do this thing that we did before. We can cross out these two terms in the numerator and denominator, and rewrite this as 1 over x minus 2. So what these two solutions correspond to, this one that we could, that we could not cancel out, that is still here um, at x equals positive 2, that's our vertical asymptote. But because we've been able to get rid of this term x equals positive 2, which gave us the solution x equals negative 2, this is actually what is called a removable discontinuity. Okay. Now it probably wasn't called a removable discontinuity back in advanced functions. They probably just called it a hole in the graph. Have you heard that term before? Yeah. Okay. So our vertical asymptote is going to be um, x equals positive 2. So if we were sketching a graph of this thing, we would know that if we went to x equals positive 2, we would have a vertical asymptote like this. And I'll label this x equals positive 2, just like that. Now if we were going to sketch the graph of this function, um, oh, before we do that, we should also sort of mention how would we graph this removable discontinuity? Well, we would go to the point where our function would be at x equals negative 2. This is positive 2, this is negative 2. And 
wherever our function lies on there, we're just going to have an open circle telling us that the function is undefined there. And that's our, well, that's our hole in the graph, our removable discontinuity. Now, if we were going to sketch what our function looks like, what we want to know is how does this function behave on either side of this vertical asymptote? So there are kind of certain possibilities here. Our function can either head off to positive infinity like that, it can head down to negative infinity like that, or it could do the same two options on either side. Head off to positive infinity, head off to negative infinity. Which of these possibilities does our function actually actually do? We can get a handle on this by thinking about what happens as we make our x value closer and closer to this value of positive 2. Now we can never make it exactly equal to positive 2 because the function doesn't exist at positive 2, but we can look at how the function behaves as we go closer and closer and closer but never get there. And you probably already guessed that if we're moving closer and closer and closer but not actually getting there, we're thinking about taking a limit. So we can take the limit as x tends to positive 2 of our function, and I'm going to use the simplified version here, 1 over x minus 2, and we can imagine what happens as we approach it both from the right and from the left. To get a sense of what's going on, if, we're, if x is approaching positive 2 from the right, we're approaching it from a value of x that is slightly larger than 2. So it might be helpful just to imagine putting in a value for x that is slightly larger than 2. So I might choose a value of x that might be 2.1. So what happens when I put 2.1 into this thing, trying to evaluate this limit by direct substitution? Well, my numerator is going to be 1, and my denominator is going to be, let's see, 2.1 minus 2 gives me 0 0.1. Okay. What I'm interested in here is the sign of my numerator and the sign of my denominator. Okay. My numerator is going to be positive, my denominator is going to be positive as well. As I make x closer and closer to positive 2 from values of x that are larger than 2, if I do x minus 2, because my value of x that I'm choosing here, if I subtract 2, I'm always going to be slightly larger than 0 here. Okay? And just doing this, putting this in this test example just kind of confirms it. So the denominator here is still tending towards 0 as I get closer and closer and closer and closer. But it's tending towards 0 from positive numbers. So I might write in that it's going to be like a positive zero. Okay? Because I'm really only interested in the sign of these things here. And sometimes I put these square brackets around things just to sort of what to, to sort of get across the idea that I'm not evaluating this, I'm just thinking about what the sign of this is. So what do I get when I do one divided by zero? Okay? Well, if I've got any number divided by a really, really small number, I'm going to get something that's really, really big. Okay? So this thing is going to tend off towards infinity. Okay? Now, is it going to go off to positive infinity or negative infinity? Well, because my numerator is positive and my denominator is positive, two positives give me another positive, so this is going to go off to positive infinity. So as my function approaches positive 2, or my vertical asymptote from the right, it's going to go off to positive infinity. So the curve is going to behave like that. Oh wait, okay, okay. we don't know if that's not right. But we know that this one is not right. Because on one side of that vertical asymptote, it can either go up to positive infinity, or it can go down to positive negative infinity. What happens when we approach x equals positive 2 from the left, or from values of x that are slightly less than um, positive 2. Well, we can imagine putting in a value that is slightly less than 2, something like 
1.9. So what's going to happen up in our numerator? Well, our numerator is going to stay the same. It's going to still be a positive number, positive 1. What happens down in our denominator? Well, if we imagine doing 1.9 minus 2, we're going to end up with negative 0 0.1. So as we approach from the left, our denominator is always going to be negative. So we can imagine that this thing is like a negative 0 here. Okay? As we move x closer and closer to 2, we're going to have a series of negative numbers that get smaller and smaller and smaller and approach 0. So if we do positive 1 divided by something that is like negative, we are going to get a negative, and because we're dividing by zero, this is going to go off to negative infinity. So on this side of the graph, as we approach from the left, our function is going to come down like this and head off to negative infinity. So it's not going to do this. And then the rest of our graph is just kind of going to do this, and we're still going to have that hole in there. So this, thinking about it in terms of limits, just gives us a little way of visualizing or trying to think about what is happening on either side of that vertical asymptote.